Thank you for joining us tonight. As Jeff said, we're going to talk about public health. You have questions, we have answers. Everything you need to know about your public health for a healthy bladder, bowel, and sexual function. In this presentation, we will go over what is the pelvic floor? How does it function? What is pelvic floor dysfunction and the symptoms of it? How common are pelvic floor disorders in men and women? Ways to reduce risk of pelvic floor dysfunction? Exercises to improve pelvic floor dysfunction? How therapy can improve pelvic health and what to expect with treatment? And we'll provide resources for anyone wanting to seek out pelvic health therapy. Research has found that as many as one in two of all people will have pelvic health issues in their lifetime. That is a lot. What is the pelvic floor? Most people have heard the term pelvic floor. However, many do not realize what the pelvic floor does on a daily basis. It's a group of muscles, fascia, nerves, and blood vessels that all work together 24 seven to support the bladder, bowel, and sexual function. They contract and relax on demand when you need them to allow for urination, defecation, bowel and bladder continence, organ support, and sexual function. Pelvic health issues often arise when the pelvic floor stops working properly. Pelvic floor dysfunctions are common, but not normal. Pelvic health therapy is recognized as the first line of treatment for many pelvic floor disorders. What is pelvic health? It's a state of wellness, illness, or injury in the pelvic area. Good pelvic health would mean the pelvic area is free from injury or illness. Remember, one out of every two people will experience pelvic health issues in their life. Problems can include, but are not limited to, pain, urinary incontinence, pelvic organ prolapse, fecal incontinence, constipation. When problems arise, they can often cause embarrassment, discomfort, and change in how we approach our daily lives. Often individuals do not seek out care for these disorders because of lack of information, the belief that their problems are normal, or embarrassment. Healthcare providers may be reluctant to refer these patients to a specialist or not know who to refer them to. It is time to start talking about pelvic health more so that we can have the confidence to seek our help and live our best life. What is pelvic health therapy? It's a form of conservative treatment a non-surgical approach to allow the muscles to heal, to rehab any dysfunctions in the pelvis, to improve symptoms of bowel, bladder, pain, and sexual health dysfunctions. Pelvic health treatment is often provided by a physical therapist or an occupational therapist. We utilize many different forms of treatment, such as education and behavioral changes for toileting posture, timed voiding, among many other things. We provide manual or hands-on therapy. We perform modalities like electrical stimulation or ultrasound. We give exercises and we do functional task retraining. What is a pelvic health therapist? It's a physical therapist or occupational therapist who are ex experts in identifying neuromusculoskeletal issues resulting in pelvic floor dysfunction. Pelvic rehab is not commonly part of the initial training for a physical and occupational therapist. They're trained beyond the typical degree. These individuals complete additional training, such as continuing education, residencies, and internships to gain additional knowledge and specialize in pelvic health. Let's go over the structure of the pelvic floor. In this image, you can see the bony anatomy of the pelvic floor, of the pelvic of the pelvis. The pelvis is made up of the two pelvic bones and the sacrum. That's the triangular bone at the base of the spine. Here you can see the pelvic floor itself. There are several layers of muscle, fascia, and nerve within the pelvis that make up the pelvic floor. Labeled on this image are the superficial and the deep pelvic floor muscles, along with the anal sphincter muscles. Both men and women have a pelvic floor and can have pelvic floor dysfunction. Overall, you can see that the pelvic floor of men and women are relatively the same with some slight variations. On the image on the left, you can see, and I will circle, 
In the male, the pelvic floor runs from the pubic bone to the tailbone. The same is on the female anatomy too. Here you can see the pelvic anatomy in a cross-sectional view. I'll circle the pelvic floor for you again. So in the male, it runs from the pubic bone back to the tailbone. In the female, it does the same. What are the functions of the pelvic floor? The muscles of the core all need to work together to create a stable base for all movement of the body. The core is made of the pelvic floor, which is the base of a can. So we're gonna talk about a soda can as our analogy. The pelvic floor makes up the base. The multifidi in the back as labeled on the image on the left and the abdominals in the front make up the sides of the can. And the diaphragm at the top of the image forms the top of the can. When the core is working together, we have a stable base for movement. When the core is not functioning together, we lose our stable base and dysfunction can occur, such as bowel, bladder, sexual function, lumbar, hip, and abdominal complaints, among many others. When functioning optimally, muscles contract or shorten for things like leakage prevention, during exercise or cough and sneeze. They lengthen or bulge to allow improved defecation or childbirth. If the muscles fail to relax, they can develop a state of tension and cause pain much like any part of the body. Pelvic floor muscles are always on to some extent as they assist in the closure of the pelvic openings. This can aid in things like prevention of leakage when asleep. So even when we're laying down asleep, these muscles are on and helping to close that opening. Many people do not know how to correctly perform a pelvic floor contraction or relaxation. Later, I'm gonna go over how to perform a pelvic floor contraction. Pelvic floor disorders and dysfunction. Pelvic floor muscles should contract and relax on, dis on demand. We should be able to voluntarily control these muscles. If muscles are too tight, it can be hard to relax, causing difficulty with bowel movements, incomplete urination, burning during urination, weak urinary stream, constipation, or pain with sex. If the muscles are too loose, it can cause urinary leakage, bowel leakage, or pelvic organ prolapse. Pressures on the pelvis such as pregnancy, childbirth, chronic cough, chronic constipation, constant straining or nerve damage can lead to pelvic floor disorders too. What are some common conditions? Common conditions include, but are not limited to, fecal incontinence, fecal urgency, pain with defecation, constipation, diarrhea or loose stool, irritable bowel syndrome, anal fissures, hemorrhoids, dyspareunia, erectile dysfunction, pain with orgasm, difficulty achieving orgasm, inability to tolerate penetration. So as you can see, when things go wrong in the pelvic floor, it can cause many different types of conditions. Urinary incontinence can be caused by many things. Some common questions asked in pelvic health therapy or that you can ask yourself include, how many times per day do you empty your bladder? Are you going every 30 minutes or you're not going but three times a day? How long does it take to empty your bladder? Are you able to go nice and slow and empty slowly or are you rushing it as you go or is it taking you a very long time because you can't get it out? Do you empty completely? Do you go to the bathroom and you feel like you don't have any more urge? Or do you still feel like you need to go a lot? Do you have trouble initiating urination? So when you try to urinate, do you have to sit there for a while before the flow starts? Do you have any burning, cloudy urine or odor? Are you able to stop the flow? 
So are your muscles strong enough that if you're going to the bathroom that you could stop it if you needed to? Do you leak with a cough, sneeze, or laugh? Do you leak with urgency to go to the bathroom? Do you have pain when you urinate? Or do certain foods or drinks make your symptoms worse? Do you drink coffee and then need to go to the bathroom 10 times the next hour? While urinary incontinence can be common, it is not normal. This image describes two different types of urinary incontinence. Normally, the bladder stays relaxed and the urethra stays contracted and closed until the patient is ready to void. With urinary incontinence, the bladder muscles contract before the patient is ready to void in response to a sensation of urge. The pelvic floor muscles are not strong enough to stop the urine from leaking. So we get an urge to go to the bathroom and the muscles let go and we leak before we ever make it to the bathroom. With stress incontinence, abdominal pressure is placed on the bladder and the muscles are too weak to prevent leakage. So this is like with a cough. A lot of new moms have this issue where they cough and the muscles aren't strong enough so they leak on themselves. The muscles at layer two of the pelvic floor aid the external urethral sphincter in closing the urethra to prevent leakage. These muscles can be strengthened. Pelvic health therapy is a good option for learning how to properly strengthen these muscles. So when do you seek treatment? Good pelvic floor function is crucial to how we function every day. If you have a pelvic health issue, you should know that there is help. Millions of people have pelvic floor issues, but few seek treatment. Women and men often delay care due to embarrassment, prioritization of family, or the belief that their symptoms are normal. Many benefit from working with a pelvic health physical therapist or occupational therapist specifically trained in strengthening and coordinating the muscles of the pelvic floor. It's also important to know that some people are at higher risk of pelvic floor disorders such as those with connective tissue disorders, chronic coughing and sneezing, multiple births, a history of pelvic radiation or cancer treatments, a history of hernia, a history of abdominal or pelvic surgeries. So you should discuss pelvic health with your provider. The research is clear that many physicians do not ask about pelvic dysfunction and most patients are embarrassed to bring it up. The best way to address dysfunction is to be honest and open about your concerns with your provider. If you feel like you have pelvic health dysfunction, you can ask your provider for a referral to visit a pelvic health therapist. However, sometimes medical providers are not aware of this specialty. It is kind of a newer emerging area and it's not commonly talked about. They also sometimes don't know where to refer patients we're gonna give you some information on where you can get a referral to. So what happens in an appointment? What happens in a pelvic health therapy appointment? Most clinics, you'll meet with your therapist for 45 to 60 minutes each visit. At that time, we'll develop a plan of care. Most of the time, plan of care is run from one to three visits per week for four to six weeks. Some Care plans will be shorter or longer depending on the findings during the initial evaluation. You can bring a friend or a loved one with you. We highly suggest bringing someone with you if it makes you feel more comfortable or if they are able to help you tell your story to the therapist or if you need them to hear the information so you can remember it better later. During your initial evaluation, the pelvic health therapist will ask about your story what has you concerned, and your goals with therapy. They're gonna to wanna to know how long this has been going on and what symptoms are bothering you the most, but all about all of your symptoms in general. They will perform a musculoskeletal assessment. During this time, the pelvic health therapist will go over several different types of assessments. These can be based on what your complaints are. Um, they can also be based on your comfort level. So we like to have options. After the exam, you'll be informed of the findings and options for treatment. 
You also will be provided with suggestions for a home care program or self-care so that you can actively participate in your healing process. Afterwards, your pelvic health therapist will communicate with your health care provider as appropriate. So not only will we find we go through and do all of this assessment, but we're also going to make sure your doctor knows what's going on and how we plan to treat it. Your therapist will examine your posture, how you move. They'll assess the pelvic floor muscles for weakness, tension, pain, and lack of coordination. They'll also assess areas around the pelvic floor, such as your lumbar spine or your low back, your hips, and your abdominals. They will provide education on different things such as appropriate bowel and bladder habits, food and fluid needs, and self-care techniques to help your symptoms. Treatments such as biofeedback or ultrasound may be used for evaluation or for treatment. They will instruct you in a home program for muscle strengthening, relaxation, or coordination as needed. They may use manual therapy approaches to aid in muscle recovery. During pelvic floor therapy, we will teach you exercises to stabilize and strengthen your core or the major muscles that stabilize the trunk, including the pelvic floor, abdominal, back, and diaphragm. This also involves retraining and strengthening your pelvic floor muscles. Let's go over some exercises for your pelvic floor. But first, we need to find out how to find your pelvic floor muscles. I'll go over this and then we'll do it together. A good starting point with the pelvic floor muscles is seated in a supported position. You want to be comfortable and not feel like you're trying to hold yourself up. Now imagine you're squeezing your muscles to stop the flow of urine and or stop the passing of gas. You're gonna focus on drawing these muscles inward tightly. This gives you an idea of the location and function of the pelvic floor muscles. You should not tighten your abdomen or glutes during this motion. You should be able to do it without using other muscles. So let's do that together. Sit nice and supported. Imagine squeezing those muscles to stop the flow of urine or stop the passing of gas. Feel those muscles lift up and then release them. Try to make sure your abdomen and your glutes don't fire during this motion. Our first exercise we're gonna go over is pelvic floor coordination. We often suggest for you trying to hold this for up to 10 seconds, depending on what you can do. So if you're able to hold it three seconds without letting go, that's where we start but we wanna build up a longer amount of time. First, breathe in through your nose and fill up your belly with air. As you breathe out with a pursed lip, squeeze and lift your pelvic floor muscles. Hold it for a few seconds, and then drop and relax your pelvic floor and breathe in. We say you can repeat this up to 10 times. Yet again, if you can only do five, that's okay. You can slowly build this nut up. So let's do it together. Breathe in through your nose. Fill your belly up with air as you breathe out through a pursed lip, so like you're blowing out a candle. Squeeze and lift your pelvic floor muscles. Hold it for a few seconds. Drop and relax your pelvic floor and breathe in again. The second exercise we're gonna go over is called quick flex. It's very similar to what we just did, but you're not going to hold this exercise. You're gonna squeeze and lift your pelvic floor, and then you're gonna drop and relax your pelvic floor. The importance of this one is that you're gonna make sure you're fully relaxing the muscle each time. You're gonna repeat it 10 times as quickly as you can. So we'll do it together. Squeeze and lift, drop and relax. Squeeze and lift, drop and relax. Squeeze and lift, drop and relax. As you can see, I'm doing it now and I'm able to talk. So the big key to this is you should be able to breathe while you're doing it. You shouldn't be holding your breath. 
Our last exercise gets a little bit harder. These are called pelvic floor elevators. You're gonna feel your pelvic floor squeeze as if an elevator door is closing. And then you're gonna let that elevator go up to the first floor. We consider this about a 33% of a contraction. Then you're gonna lift your pelvic floor to the second floor. This is about 66% of a contraction. You're gonna keep squeezing and lift up to the third floor. That's 100% contraction. Then you're gonna to drop to the second floor, back to that 66%, then drop to the first floor, down to 33%, and then drop all the way back to the lobby and let the elevator doors open. So let's try that together. This one's kind of hard. You're gonna squeeze those muscles as if you're closing the door and you're gonna lift up about a third of a contraction to that first floor. Then you're gonna lift up to the second floor, 66% of a contraction. You're gonna keep squeezing, it gets harder, and all the way up to a full contraction. Try to hold that for just a second. And then try to drop down just to that six, second floor, about 66%. You don't wanna let it go all the way. And then you're gonna to drop to the first floor down to 33%. Don't let it go all the way down yet. And then drop to the lobby. Open those elevator doors, let everything relax. We usually suggest repeating this three times. And if you can, do a little hold at each floor. Try to go nice and slow. What are tips for pelvic health at any age? Just as people exercise and eat well to help prevent heart disease, obesity, and diabetes, you can also work to improve your pelvic health throughout your life. We all hear that it's normal to have urinary leakage at a certain age. However, it's not, and we can help prevent some of this by making sure we keep our pelvic health healthy. One thing we can do is learn how to contract and relax the pelvic floor muscles like a trampoline. We've already went over this today. You guys are gonna be rock stars at that. Stretching, breathing, and meditation can help loosen overly tight pelvic muscles. So if you're having pain with intercourse or difficulty urinating or constipation, these things can be really helpful. You're gonna to want to avoid prolonged toileting, straining, or pushing during bowel movements or when urinating. You should be able to allow bowel movements in urination to almost just fall out when you're sitting on the toilet. You shouldn't have to hold your breath and push at all. Avoid constipation by consuming plenty of fluids, mostly water and fiber. A good diet of fiber and water can really help constipation. And if we can manage constipation, then we decrease our risk of straining on the toilet. You're gonna to wanna to decrease intake of caffeine, alcohol, and artificial sweeteners. That's because these are considered bladder irritants. They make us feel like we need to go to the bathroom more. So if you find that you're drinking one of these and you're going to the bathroom 10 times the next hour, it could be because they're an irritant to you. So you may need to decrease your intake of them. Or I even tell my patients sometimes, drink lots of water around the same time just to help flush them out of your system so they don't sit and irritate your bladder as long. We also wanna avoid smoking. Smoking can lead to many things, including lung conditions and coughing, which puts extra pressure on our pelvic floor. Avoid heavy lifting, which can lead to pelvic organ prolapse and hernia. We all can't avoid heavy lifting, but if you do have to heavy lift, make sure you know how to do it properly to protect your back, your abdomen, and your pelvic floor. Here's my tip of the day, how to have a better bowel movement. Bowel movements can be improved by changing the angle at which we are sitting. You may have all heard of a squatty potty, but we can do this with any kind of stool or something. When you're sitting with the knees at or below the hips, when we're just sitting on a regular toilet with nothing under our feet, the puborectalis, one of the pelvic floor muscles that you can see in the bottom left image, it slings around the rectum to help keep the rectum closed. But when we're sitting with our knees at or below the hips, that muscle stays tight and can stop things from moving through. So it can make it difficult to have a bowel movement. It can cause constipation. If we lift the legs up by putting our feet on a higher surface, 
such as a stool. I've had patients put books under their feet, whatever works to help get your knees up a little higher and try to decrease that angle to about 35 degrees. It's going to help the pubo-rectalis um, relax and the rectum can open for better flow. With our program, we came up with several questions to help you know when you need pelvic floor therapy or when it may be beneficial to you. Some of the questions include, do you have urine leakage with a laugh, cough, sneeze, exercise, or urgency? As we've all heard, these things start occurring with life and we've been told they're normal. However, they're not. So if you have those symptoms, you may benefit from pelvic health therapy. Do you have burning with urination or frequent urinary tract infections? Have you had burning with urination and been told you don't have urinary tract infections? This could be caused by pelvic floor dysfunction. Do you have urinary frequency, urgency, hesitancy, or incomplete emptying? Do you go to the bathroom a lot? Or do you feel like when you need to go to the bathroom, you have to go right then, or you feel like you're gonna leak? Or when you sit down to go to the bathroom, do you feel like it takes a while for you to go? Or when you do go, do you then get up from the bathroom, from the toilet, and then feel like you need to go immediately again? Feelings of pelvic pressure, fullness, or heaviness. This can be a sign of pelvic organ prolapse. If you feel like something's constantly falling out, or you just feel like that whole area feels swollen and heavy. Have you had a recent birth? All new moms should be seeing a pelvic health therapist to help them recover, to be able to take care of their kid better, but also take care of themselves better. Do you have a separation of the abdominal wall or the muscles? When you go to sit up in bed, do you notice that you have a big bulge in the middle of your abdomen? Or do you notice that you have pain when you try to do things like that? Do you have loss of, a, of bowel or inability to control gas? Do you, when you turn over in bed, do you pass gas on accident? Or when you have the urge to have a bowel movement, are you not able to make it to the toilet before it starts? Do you have straining or pain with a bowel movement? You can use the tip of the day to see if that will help, but also is it because the pelvic floor muscles are not functioning properly? Do you have the inability to completely empty your bowels? Are you having to go back to the bathroom and have bowel movements several times a day because you just can't get it all out at once? Or do you feel like you go and then you get up and you still need to go? Do you have pelvic pain during pelvic exams, tampon use, or intercourse? No pain with any of these things is normal and it should be addressed so that we can live our lives and have a healthier time. We want to be able to make pelvic pain with pelvic exams go away so that we can make sure we're having full and complete pelvic exams and making sure that we're still healthy. Do you have pelvic pain with prolonged sitting? When you sit, do you feel like you're sitting on a golf ball? Or do you feel when you're sitting, do you start getting pain down your legs from like your tailbone area? If you answered yes to any of those questions, an evaluation for pelvic floor dysfunction is recommended. Um, how do you find a pelvic health therapist? So we have many locations across the country. 